Good evening, church. We know what tonight is. Come on, let's celebrate our pastors. Come on, come on. I don't hear you, I don't hear you. All right, all right. It sounds like y'all ready. Y'all ready for a good time tonight. Listen real quick. We want to take a moment to highlight one aspect about our pastors that you may not know. This season that we're in, going into our 20th year in ministry, we realize how important the millennials are. Pastor has been emphasizing about the impact of our church and how we need to be deliberate about being multi-generational. In fact, that's just what we simply are. We're a multi-generational church. We want to highlight the millennial generation. Take a look at the screens and hear the stories of other millennials who have witnessed the experience to sit under the ministry of Dr. Herbert Marsha Bailey and how much they appreciate and love them too. Hear the voice of our millennials. My first encounter with uh, Pastor Bailey, actually, um, I was working, I was waiting on him. And um, I was like, man, this guy is really quirky. You know, he was really funny. Um, eventually, he invited me to his church. And it was months later, maybe about six to eight months later, I finally attended of my first service. And ever since then, it was just like, man, you know, this is a place, a great place for me. I come from military background, so. Uh, I was used to things always being the same, so when I first came in the right direction, I was a little reserved. Um, but I started noticing uh, what he was saying. It wasn't just him, but it was almost like a culture of people. It wasn't, just, it wasn't just him that was doing this, but people were actively helping him do. I remember at, at one point, I went simply from observing um, to, to watching what he was saying coming true in my life. My first encounter with Right Direction, I was about 15, 16. I was very introverted. My mom had started to come here because one of her friends, Mr. Reddick McNeil, went here. And um, I just knew it was something different about the church. I grew up in Word of Faith Church under my uncle, and what Pastor Bailey taught was very similar to that, and I, I, was, I was drawn to it. You know, so the things that, that he really spoke about was really stuff that, I was, that was already in my heart. And so I would come to church more and I started to see more and more similarities between his life and mine, you know, that he grew up in the hood and that was something that I, of course I could relate to and how he, but he didn't look like it anymore. You know, his life had drastically changed. So as he would give his messages and talk more and more about the stories, you know, even though he would say people hear him a lot, they, they all touched me. I don't take it for granted. Um, I, I know that if you don't feed something, it, will, it won't grow. Um, so the fact that out of everything they could be doing, that he, he is intentional about feeding us as new millennials. He's deliberate about our generation. He's deliberate about, which speaks of how he thinks of the ministry and moving forward and not just the now. He, he's deliberate about pointing into us because with all of the ministries and all of the different things that those two already have going on throughout the week, whether it be leadership meetings or volunteer meetings, they, for them to take that Friday out when they're balancing family and balancing everything else that they're doing really speaks of their dedication. Being under them has taught me like how to trust God and they are living proof. I mean, Pastor Marsha, when she gets on stage and just takes over, like it does something to you, you know, and, and you can feel the power, you can see the anointing on both of them and they are so powerful, um, just amazing people. I remember one time he said, uh, Back in Oklahoma or somewhere, he used to take time to go take the kids up to ice, take the kids to get ice cream, um, and uh, that stood out to me because he didn't have to do that. Um, so still to still see him do that, I mean, we haven't gone up to ice cream yet, but <laughs> to still see him, you know, take time out to do something that he doesn't have to do, um, and sowing seeds into us, I I I, um, I treasure that because. I, I, I know that what he's doing is, he's purposeful about it, so um, the, results, the results are gonna come from him being direct. For him to take that wisdom that he has at his age and at their age and be able to pour that into us at our age, it really sets us up and shows how much they value our future. To me, they are the epitome. <laughs> of what love looks like, um, what love is. When I see them, I see a physical example of how God created the family to be, how he created marriage to be, and how he created prosperity to be in every area of your life. I see a physical example of that every time I look at them. Redemption, um, a second chance. 
Um, we, we hear all the times their stories about how, how life was growing up when they first got married, you know, when they first had kids, and it could have ended there. Like, it, that could have been the end of the legacy, but um, when, I think about, when I think about them, I think about no matter what I'm going through, this is not it. Just to know that they're not up there for themselves, they're not up there for the show, like, they actually genuinely care about us. So they will take the time to be involved in your life and not just be up there speaking every Sunday and Wednesday, you know, and Friday. I love them as pastors and, a, and as examples. And I love the fact that they have sacrificed so much to be those examples to me. There has been times where a um, pastor has come to me um, and that has probably had the biggest impact on me. Is, um, um, it's, it's one thing for, some, for them to respond to, you know, us greeting them or whatever, but for him to reach out to me, like, it, it, I don't want to say it threw me off, um, but like, I was going through something at that time and I wasn't telling nobody and he literally pulled me aside one time um, and was like, you know, hey, let's make an appointment, let's meet up. And I'm over here like, what, what in the world, what are you, what are you doing? But that, that con it didn't confirm, it just once again showed that he really does hear from God. Thank you so much for um, your ministry, your time, your love, your dedication, and thank you so much for your sacrifice.